Hello everyone, it's good to be talking to you. It's your live session uh, after the, the fourth week of the MOOC. We are here uh, again uh, with uh, Romain, Antoine and uh, Vanessa for you. And uh, today the agenda is uh, uh, to have a look at the polls uh, that you entered, an update, um, a reminder on the peer assessment number two, and also uh, answering your questions. Hello everyone, it's good to be talking to you. So if we start with uh, the, the poll, Um, I'm Vanessa, can you just put the polls, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, so, well, the results uh, of the different questions that you have been asked uh, is pretty pretty good. Uh, uh, you seem to have uh, a, a good or strong uh, understanding of what's going on in the course, and uh, the difficulty is uh, reasonable, well distributed. We have also um, uh, looking at the other um, uh, the other uh, questions from the poll. Um, the you find that uh, it's relevant or extremely relevant, eighty percent, and uh, that uh, the quality of the material, of the design of the course, is also uh, very very good uh, based on the comparison we can have with the other courses. We are above eighty or even. Uh, close to 90% of satisfaction. So thank you very very much. We put all of our efforts to satisfy you, and it seems that it's uh, paying back. Uh, now, if we go to the uh, uh, other uh, uh, elements, so we passed the 16,000 bar of learners, and so that's, that's super cool. And we were at 170-something countries. We, we are now at one. 183 countries, so lots of diversity, uh, and that's also uh, super super cool. We're very happy with that. If uh, we uh, check at the uh, the quiz this week, I mean there there was no real question that seemed to be uh, uh, difficult or um, poorly formulated. Uh, and if we look at the average score. Uh, for quiz one to four, well, you have uh, a, an average score of 80% of you actually, uh, you know, pass it uh, the first time very uh, satisfactorily. Uh, just reminder here: there are uh, the possibility just to pass. There is the possibility to pass the different quizzes until the deadline, February 24th. Uh, the four quizzes plus the final one. But I'm sure that the the scores will not. Uh, diminish uh, at all. Um, then we had some questions about the, uh, the peer assessment. Peer assessment number two um, is important. It's based uh, on what you've done for the peer assessment one, or if you haven't done it, uh, you can still take the peer assessment two, as we said last time. Uh, Deadline for submitting this is tomorrow, 11 p.m. So it's quite soon. You you only have one one day, let's say, just to, to finish this, depending on the time zone where you are. Answering now some of your questions from from that. Uh, we listed some of them. So, for instance, Terry Geno de Musi asked. For the second peer assessment, we are asked to include an analysis of the matrix given. Does it make reference to one of the organization at risk or logics of action at risk? Do we need to analyze our situation locating the company we describe in one of the four places? Thanks. Yes, uh, I would say actually the idea is for you just to, to pick one of the three matrices, uh, engage, resist, uh, or rearrange, and basically to locate uh, the situation. Uh, of your organization or the organization that you are describing in one of the of the cells. So it's just for 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 you just to in a sense 
uh, appropriate the, the reasoning, locate the situation in one of these uh, uh, quadrants, and um, make an effort to see whether actually this um, situation corresponds with the decision that is uh, actually uh, corresponding in the, in the matrix. So for instance, we have here engage in front of us, so if uh, the situation puts your, your organization in tech power, do you think that uh, it's reasonable to do that? Why uh, or um, why not? So that's basically the idea of the peer assessment too. So for those who worked on the peer assessment one, you describe the situation, you receive a feedback from the people who actually assessed the situation, and then what we want to do is just for you just to apply, just to push the logic uh, at its uh, limits and just to, to decide whether uh, the solution that is provided by one of the metrics makes sense. I won't say that uh, you need to say that actually it makes perfect sense. Maybe your situation it has some peculiarities that will make it, uh, that make, uh, for instance, take power more or less relevant for you, and if it's the case, try to explain why maybe tech power is not the best solution, just one possibility. So the next question, Vanessa. Um, uh, from the forum, we have Sebastian Bone asking a question about something that happened in France was the, called the Poussin movement, uh, that was like kind of um, uh, the French government trying just to impose some taxes on young entrepreneurs and uh, Sebastian says finally the logic of the market from Poussin has won. The state, a low risk organization, lost maybe because there was a lack of support of its own logic. The winner is the logic that is the most supported. So I would say yes, um, this is what happened. I mean uh, I think that in this decision the support of the dominant organization, the state, uh, was not sufficient that you had a very strong movement of entrepreneurs and uh, supporters of these entrepreneurs that um, identified uh, problems in the uh, severe problems in, in decisions that the state was uh, going to make and therefore the, the, the state had to, uh, to move backwards. Um, the other remark that I will make also from the question is, that, is the, the term win and lose. Um, what I want to say is that in this view, the public space is full, or more or less full, but let's say in uh, Western societies is full of these different logics uh, that have, uh, that are present. And maybe in some other societies, um, the logic of the market will be less present, the logic of the family or the logic of the religion will be more present, uh, and the public space will be more or less open as well. So I won't say that you have a win or lose situation, you have, I would say, more prevalence or less prevalence, more openness of the public space and public sphere, and uh, less of openness. So it's a question of, of gradation. Of, of obviously, in, in totalitarian societies, the public sphere, the public space is reduced at its minimum, and uh, the logic of the state uh, is at its maximum. And in that case, maybe you can say one party, uh, one over the others. A question from Madan uh, Ramachandran uh, is asking about um, the uh, management, uh, saying management matters in shaping an organization and public space. While, is, uh, while that is true, what approach should management of organizations take to be effective inside out or outside in, or do they need to take both? Yes, so, and Madan makes a reference to uh, actually these uh, approaches um, that are used in strategic uh, management. Actually, you need both. That means that any organization is part of an environment, and to analyze its environment is the uh, um, outside in approach, so you look at the outside of the organization, the competitors, the buyers, suppliers, um, eventually uh, also uh, government rules, regulatory uh, um, uh, rules, re yes, regulatory environment, etc. And to determine what are the best positions in this environment to actually have an advantage. So if you take some countries that are deregulating their industries, well, that can be a good moment actually just to, to, to 
enter uh, a country yet. And this is outside in. But all, I mean, every firm needs also to analyze very carefully its internal environment, and this is the inside out, to really make an advantage and defend it. So yes, you need both of them. Uh, you need the external and the internal analysis to really determine and explain what makes a firm successful. Outside is the environment, inside is the resources and competencies that have been developed uh, in for a given activity or in another activity and that you transfer to your new business. In the last live session, uh, we had Benoit Delus, the CEO of Sibia, and he was explaining to us how taking some of these internal competencies, he was able to reposition the firm in a new environment where the competitors were really different, bigger firms, uh, more international firms, uh, deep-pocketed players, and that actually he had really to combat uh, these uh, competitors using different um, competencies that one he had developed in the uh, first business in which he was. So next question here. Um, Um, so Juan Rivera uh, Rodriguez is asking uh, about the three vectors of action, engage, resist, and rearrange. How do they relate to each other? How do the individual's actions following the three vectors of action relate to each other? Are they independent vectors? Are they mostly sequential in their pertinent or natural occurrence or mostly concurrent parallel? And he says, I am tempted, maybe due to semantics, to see a life cycle starting with engagement driven first phase, a resistance middle phase, and a rearrangement matter phase in an individual meaningful action within an organization. Each phase would be driven by one vector, but also influenced by the other two. Is it too far-fetched? Well, I would say, um, no, I think it's not uh, far-fetched. That's true that I haven't uh, conceived the uh, three actions as part of a life cycle. But what you're saying, I, I actually, in this question, I think it makes quite a lot sense to me, and um, I would say, for, 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 I won't be against it. I mean, I would, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's very interesting to, to, to consider this. The way I saw it at first was uh, simply as a situation that you are facing, and as depending on your analysis of the logics of actions, of the risks the organization is at, uh, it's currently, you know, uh, facing, or the logic itself, it's, uh, you know, what can you do? I mean, uh, what should you do? I mean, how do you position yourself? So engage is from within uh, the organization. Uh, resist is within and outside the organization. And rearrange is really more your individual uh, choices when you consider the whole set of uh, memberships and attachments you have with organizations. But I would be interested to discuss this even more, actually, this uh, idea of life cycle. Uh, but maybe not now, uh, as I have to also ask, uh, sorry, to answer the question asked by Manuel Alberto Iguado, uh, is it possible to have a polar preferred nations? So here we are discussing with, uh, with Romain, Vanessa, and uh, Antoine about this, and that's true that this is very personal, and um, by personal I mean an individual decision to, to, to make when you decide to uh, uh, refocus. It means that you th think that uh, um, you have basically a high coherence between the different uh, memberships you have. You have a core membership and the other uh, that are uh, basically coherent with this uh, main um, membership. But at the same time, that the durability of your core organization, you know, you can think of, you know, your firm. Uh, you can think of an association, a club, whatever, uh, is at risk, and therefore you say, "Hey, where should I? What should I do? Where should I put my energy? Uh, how should I, you know, make sense of this different uh, coherent uh, um, relationships with organizations?" So in that case, we refocus, and so we're talking with uh, Antoine, Romain, Vanessa about situations where uh, some people change careers, you know. Shifts in careers where uh, people, um, you know, um, where bankers start to do, you know, uh, vine uh, 
making uh, or um, any other um, examples you may have around you of people that actually said, well, you know, I stopped this first type of career and embrace a new activity would be examples of refocus. But obviously, it's more maybe more difficult because uh, to, to find a name because these people are uh, not celebs, uh, celebrities, and um, we don't know them uh, exactly. So that's why we did not put uh, directly an uh, uh, example of a firm or um, of an individual making these choices. Um, now, um, if we go uh, back to the presentation, uh, Vanessa, um, the and if you, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking also about this, you know, um, you know, where refocus um, thing. I mean, this book ends, uh, you know, February twenty fourth. And there is another MOOC uh, that uh, takes uh, that follow pass, which is called Devenir Entrepreneur du Changement, which means you know becoming uh, you know uh, a change uh, entrepreneur. That is exactly about this refocusing type of uh, of, of strategies. Uh, it's given also in Coursera by HEC Paris uh, and by a team of other researchers and, uh, and academics and practitioners that work with the within the society and organization research center. So if you if you're interested, please follow follow this this MOOC. Um, so now we have some other uh, questions uh, here. Um, so um, hi, Rodolf. Uh, yes. We we have a, a questions from uh, Pradeep Prasad. Yes. Uh, who believes that when you are a leader, you can find yourself in a position to resist? Uh, do you think it is true or not? You can find yourself, or you can't find yourself. That you are, uh, you can't find yourself in well, a position. Well, well, actually, yes. I mean, you you can be you 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 may have to face some logics of action that push you in certain directions, and actually, the interview that um, we we had with um, Emmanuel Faber and you know uh, Dan Danon CEO uh, is very representative of of this. As you know, for instance, the CEO of um, uh, Unilever. We don't have an interview uh, with him, but. Um, I uh, had the chance to 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 meet uh, uh, him in, in a conference, and these people actually, when they try to defend the ideas of sustainability, of social impact in uh, um, of their firm, uh, well, face uh, the markets because these firms are listed and have to resist uh, in a certain way uh, um, some of the injunctions from. Uh, their, uh, you know, uh, shareholders in in certain ways. So yes, I would say you know they are in a situation of resistance vis-à-vis -vis certain stakeholders. In this case, shareholders, uh, and uh, they they have to you know to adjust their their actions. So I would say let's not consider that leaders are you know just saying things and just people follow paths. Follow them. Uh, it's it, it's it's a bit more nuanced, I, I would say. Okay. So next we have uh, another question from uh, Juan Rivera. Um, he asks, uh, "How can you use ecology to manage a temporary team?" And I would add, uh, "Is ecology only a long-term view?" Um, that's a very good question because that's true. That I mean, um, what has been presented here is not. Um, a theory of uh, motivation. It's, um, it's more how to make sense of the changes we all face when some products become obsolete and so we don't know what to do with them. Or um, when firms, you know, um, when a firm absorb another and, you know, they were competitors and now they are just, you know, friends or supposedly so. Um, when firms disappear or organization vanish, so it's more about um, you know I would say a bit of long term view as uh, uh, Juan uh, um, is asking a question. Does that mean that it's not useful for motivating uh, temporary teams? 
I'm not sure because um, I think that you could maybe, uh, well, depending on the sector of activity and what you ask, you know, these teams to temporary uh, workers. I mean, are they are these people temporary workers or are just are just they uh, are they just there just to be a temporary team but belonging to a bigger organization like project management, for instance? This is something important to know. And so, what is the the meaning of their actions? I mean, can you just you know, uh, understand better what are they motivated by, um, what they are looking for, do they make sense of the organization, or sh could you change this temporary element uh, to make them adhere, to make them, uh, you know, um, be more um, attentive to some of the other aspects of the organization? These are some of the questions that actually the matrices uh, we saw can be useful. Um, is there the ac is there the choice? Is it their choice to be part of temporary organizations? Is it a bit imposed on them? Uh, what, are, what are the, the beliefs and the um, sense of belonging they have vis-à-vis -vis the organization or vis-à-vis -vis the team? These are these are elements I think that the, the, the this approach can discover and maybe you find the misses and find ways to um, you know to make the, the terror organizations, the teams, work better, be more uh, active, more joyful, uh, more self-fulfilling. This is what I would say to, um, to, to Juan. Um, another question, maybe, Romain? Or? or I guess we don't have any more questions on so far. Uh, so far. OK. So Vanessa, do we move on to uh, maybe the next slides? Okay. So as we don't have any more question for for that time, um, the let let us remind you some few elements. First, still time to submit the peer assessment number two until tomorrow. Evening, 11 p.m. Central Eastern Time. Then after that, you have one week to complete the peer assessment from your, I mean, uh, friends that uh, uh, have followed the, the the MOOC as well. So you have to evaluate them as you did for the for for, for the the peer assessment number one. And uh, you have also to take the final exam if you, which is only. 20 questions, I think, uh, if you haven't done it already. Then um, we are fortunate to have a final interview with a very uh, important uh, um, CEO from one of the CAC 40 firm, is the CEO of GDF Suez, which is a worldwide global energy player in three uh, um, in industries, electricity as a, the first independent uh, electricity provider natural gas and energy services uh, and so we will put this online uh, at the soonest but uh, by the time the the MOOC uh, ends which means uh, February 24th you will be able just to see this interview which will make I would say a nice uh, finish for for the MOOC because uh, you understand that actually firms um, that are involved in the energy sector, for instance, face a difficult situation, which is the logic of, you know, the, the market and uh, to uh, sell even more um, cubic meters, for instance, uh, or of gas or uh, um, kilowatts of uh, electricity. But the problem they, they have is that uh, at the same time, their customers want to have a light footprint of the environment, that these natural resources, as you all know, I mean, are limited. And so therefore, how do you manage a firm like this that has more than 200,000 employees worldwide? Uh, and how do you make these values or these new logics permeate your organization and maybe change certain uh, um, decision-making processes within the firm? So this is what we'll be talking with your Mr. Uh So you have this video. And uh, the MOOC closes on February 24th, but uh, we have a last video feedback for you guys on February 
27th about all of you who uh, succeeded with the MOOC, uh, maybe some last questions to be answered. Uh, um, and uh, so we will uh, have like a, a little farewell with, with you. Let me also remind you that we have 100 uh, ebooks waiting for you, for the people who have the best uh, scores on these questions and who have participated to the MOOC uh, uh, the most. And um, also, um, I can see that we have uh, um, a couple of more questions that appear on my screen. Um, do do we want to take them, uh, Romain? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we have a question from uh, Pradeep, and uh, he is asking basically, basically how we are in a recession, or do we change the process to get more investments? Uh, to get more investment from people, I guess, uh, within organizations. I guess so. If I if I understand the question uh, well, uh, well, I think it's exactly in this type of period that people are looking forward to investing themselves in organizations and making more sense of their lives. Um, so I would say, I mean, if, if you see all the different. Um, um, economic activities blossoming, such as, I don't know, open innovation, crowdfunding. Um, actually, in the book, <laughs> I'm taking a different stance than the one that is currently taken by many, which is that people are becoming more individualistic. So probably it's true in some societies. In, in China, I'm, I have no doubt about that. In uh, India, probably this um, the market liberalization of the last two decades has, you know, driven certain uh, behaviors like this. But in many other in many other countries, I would say that uh, people are looking for more community links to relate to the others in a more efficient way. And I think that they don't find this as they used to do in you know class memberships or um, even uh, political uh, party memberships, but they do they do this through much more fluid organizing uh, principles. If you look at crowdfunding, open innovation, as I was saying, social media, obviously, and also through uh, organizational belonging. Uh, they quit jobs more frequently, more and also maybe more easily because they are you know not having uh, found the meaning they were looking for. So I would say investment of people in their organizations is actually. Uh, stronger in the times as the ones we are uh, facing. Um, I see another question by Florence. Yeah, so there is another question um, about uh, uh, technical questions, actually. We yes. have two trial um, allowed for the final exam, um, exam and quizzes. Are we allowed to uh, use them both? Uh, so here I will, I, I will turn myself to Vanessa. So yes, uh, there are two, two trials allowed for the final quiz. Vanessa? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, you are, you are allowed to, uh, to use uh, them, to both. them both. Just as a normal code, we ask you to use them only if you have technical problems. Electricity ah, yes. outage, loss of internet connectivity, or, and so on. So uh, this is to avoid technical problems for you. But as a normal code, we ask you to use only uh, wow. one test. OK, thank you very much. Um, OK, um, so I think that we, 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 we answered different questions. Uh, so let's video feedback February 27 on all of this. Uh, uh, says that there is an, an, a new question. Uh, Antoine? So um, a question is coming up. Uh, sometimes even supporting your logic is a ground for a dismissal uh, from an organization. Have you ever really denounced bad purposes of the organization to work for or with? Uh, it's a question from Eugenia Zurazleva. 
Aha, uh -huh. so this is a question that directly uh, uh, um, addressed to me in a sense. So I would say, uh, yes, uh, actually, um, I, I did it uh, publicly uh, once in, um, in a general assembly uh, where um, I, um, I think, um, showed that some of the actions that were taken were probably not in the best interest of the people in the room and the organization uh, itself. Um, so I'm, I would say it's, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a choice. I mean, you, you face the risk, you always face the risk to, uh, uh, you know, to be rejected. Um, I think it's a question of how you put your, um, your values and, um, you know, uh, relative to your, to your acts. And I think that, you know, staying in, um, uh, staying in, um, in an organization w f for which you don't share the, the values, the logic of action, for which you see um, these many manners and uh, you know bad behaviors is not is not uh, a satisfactory situation for you both. I would say uh, mentally and uh, and and physically uh, uh, you know, over the long term. So. If you if you feel that you can you cannot resist uh, or you cannot denounce propose oppose as we saw in the matrix um, maybe what you have to do is just to rearrange and in that case it means just to severe the ties with this organization and uh, you know um, uh, self organize yourself meaning create your own organization uh, change organizations find some organization that can help you facing the situation so this are the, this is what uh, what I would say okay uh, and if you want to uh, you know um, prolong the discussion please do so I mean use the Facebook group page um, uh, so um, that you, we can maybe capture some more questions for the last uh, final uh, Video that we will be doing and diffused on the on, on the twenty seventh. Uh, if you want to join me at, at on Twitter, please do so. Uh, it's funny. And uh, in the meantime, uh, well, I think that I would like just to thank you all again for having attended or having watched this video later on. I hope it provided you with some more answers. Um, good luck with the final uh, steps. The uh, uh, pure assessment number two, the final, the final exam, and uh, well, looking forward to uh, seeing you uh, next and last time. Bye bye, and thank you the team for being with with me uh, tonight again.